In this question, we are required to calculate the average power of signal xt when cn is given as the plot you can see in the question. So cn is the coefficient of signal xt and we are required to calculate the average power of signal xt using the plot of cn given in the question. So I will solve this question using two different methods. In method number one, we will use Parseval's power theorem and in method number two, we will obtain the average power directly. So let's move to the method number one. And we know according to the Parseval's power theorem, the average power of signal xt is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity mod coefficient of signal xt whole square. If you look at the plot of cn, you will find when n is equal to minus infinity to minus 3, the coefficient cn is equal to 0. When n is equal to minus 2, coefficient cn is equal to 4. So c minus 2 is equal to 4. When n is equal to minus 1, coefficient cn is equal to 0. So c minus 1 is equal to 0. Similarly, c0 is equal to 2 c1 is equal to 0, c2 is equal to 4 and when n is equal to 3 to plus infinity coefficient cn is equal to 0. So we are having three non-zero coefficients c minus 2, c0 and c2. Now using this formula we can easily find out the average power. The average power of signal xt is equal to mod c minus 2 square plus mod c0 square plus mod c2 square. c minus 2 is equal to 4, so we have mod 4 square. c0 is equal to 2, so we have mod 2 square. c2 is equal to 4, so we have mod 4 square. We have 16 plus 4 plus 16 which is equal to 36 watts. So this is the average power of signal xt which we have calculated using the Parseval's power theorem. Now we will move to the next method. In this method, we will first write down the complex exponential Fourier series. We know xt is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity cn which is the coefficient of xt multiplied to e power jn omega naught t and in this expansion we will have only three non-zero terms and they are corresponding to c minus 2 c0 and c2 so we will directly write down the terms associated to the three coefficients we have c minus 2 e power minus j2 omega naught t plus c0 plus c2 e power j2 omega naught t. Now we will put the values of c minus 2, c0 and c2. So we have 4 e power minus j2 omega naught t plus 2 plus 4 e power j2 omega naught t. In the next step, I will take 4 common. So we have 2 plus 4 inside the bracket e power minus j2 omega naught t plus e power j2 omega naught t. This I can write as 2 cos 2 omega naught t. So we are having signal xt equal to 2 plus 4 multiplied to 2 cos 2 omega naught t or we can write 8 cos 2 omega naught t. So finally, we are having signal xt equal to 2 plus 8 cos 2 omega naught t. And from here, it is very easy to calculate the average power. We can calculate the average power of signal xt. 2 is the DC term. And we know the average power of DC is equal to the square of the DC value. So we are having 2 square plus we are having cosine function. And this is the amplitude A naught. And we know for the cosine signals, the average power is equal to a naught square divided by 2. 
a naught is equal to 8 so we have 8 square divided by 2 and we can add the two powers let's call it power 1 and let's call it power 2 we can add the two powers because DC value and cosine signal are orthogonal and whenever we have two orthogonal signals their powers are added and finally the average power of signal XT is equal to 36 2 square is equal to 4 8 square is equal to 64 and divided by 2 is 32 and 32 plus 4 is equal to 36 watts so this is the answer and we have obtained the same answer following the Parseval's power theorem. So this is all for this lecture. If you remember the Parseval's power theorem, you will save a lot of time. You can avoid the unnecessary calculations. So this is all. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.